The question for Paul Ryan last night, key issue uh, amid the headwinds, is whether doing health care first was really necessary. Paul Ryan explained why repealing Obamacare makes tax reform easier, but they do have a plan B, he said. There are about a trillion dollars in Obamacare taxes, medical device tax, the tanning tax, the excise tax, the health insurance tax, things like that. If we get rid of those taxes by repealing and replacing Obamacare, which is what our bill that the House passed does, then the revenue baseline to replace the tax code is a trillion dollars lower. To give you a sense of what a trillion dollars in a baseline means, it's about 10 points of rate reduction for corporate rates, 35 to 25 right there, a trillion dollars. And so having health care go first makes that much easier. If the Senate doesn't repeal all those taxes and we don't get all of that in law, what we will have to do, what we've already decided is our plan B, is those Obamacare taxes stay on the books, in law, with Obamacare, and if we want to get rid of those Obamacare taxes, we've got to get rid of Obamacare so that it doesn't infect and, and harm tax reform. So what we are going to do is cordon those taxes off to the side, make sure that those, those, those health care taxes stay with Obamacare, and reform the rest of the tax code so we can keep our tax plans intact to get rates down, to, to push expensing as far as we can go, to get to a territorial system, and to clean up the code for families and workers so that they have a simplified system where we can consolidate brackets and give, a, give people a code they can understand. You say that lowering the corporate tax is very important to, to obviously be competitive with the rest of yeah, the for world. For all business. I'm pass throughs as, as well. I mean, and pass throughs well. and, yeah. and larger companies as well. The president's is at 15%. You were at what, 25%. Is there a discrepancy in terms of the corporate the, rate? The House bill is 20 for corporate rate and 25 for pass throughs. As you remember, corporates pay another layer of taxation on dividends and capital gains. So we're very close. The question is going to be answered by the tax writers as to how they can get the tax rates down as low as possible. So that's really a question that doesn't have an answer yet because Ways and Means and Senate Finance haven't written the bill. But we now know that there is a common framework on which to do this with that we all agree to. And that consensus right then and there shows how we're making great progress in getting tax reform done. Are you sure you have common framework? Because a lot of people are mm -hmm. saying, why should we believe that there's common ground on tax reform when we just saw the battle, the exhausting battle that, that went on with health care? So it's a pretty good takeaway. We, just, we looked at health care and said, let's make sure that we do tax reform better and differently. So we have had exhausting meetings, uh, not exhausting meetings, we've exhausted these points between all three branches, all three decision makers, Senate, House, White House, We've had meeting after meeting after meeting to make sure we see it the same way and on our common ground. And that is why the House, who offered the border adjustment tax, realized that that was preventing us from getting consensus to get to tax reform. And once we realize there is a perfectly viable way to tax reform without having to do that, we agreed to go that direction in the sake of consensus so we can get this done. Would you consider, consider a VAT tax, which of course is so widely no, used across the world? We're, we're no not, way. We're not, we're not VAT tax people. No, no VAT tax. Okay, no, because tax. people are wondering where this extra re revenue comes from since there's no border adjustment tax. Yeah, I mean, my own view is if you throw a VAT tax, you have a VAT tax on top of an income tax, then we're like Europe. And that, that just is a stealth way to grow government. I also think the incidence of taxation uh, should fall on the individual so that they know and see the cost of their government so that they can keep it in accountable. A lot of people are saying six months into this new administration, the Republicans have the majority in the House, the Republicans have the majority in the Senate and the, and the executive chamber, and yet we can't get anything done. So what do you tell people who are saying, look, Republicans can't govern? There was an op-ed in the journal just this week. There's so much that we've done here that people don't know anything about. Like what? The day Jim Comey was testifying in the Senate, I'm sure you remember that day, there were watch parties around America. We passed our repeal and replace a Dodd-Frank out of the House. I mean, we have passed 270 bills out of the House already. We passed more bills out of the House of Representatives in the first six months of the Trump presidency than in the first six months of the Obama presidency, the Clinton presidency, and both Bush presidencies. We have already enacted the, uh, the biggest increase in border security in law in 10 years. We've already had a big down payment on our military. We've already overhauled the Veterans Administration. 14 Congressional Review Acts repealing bad oppressive regulations. A 15th one now is on its way to the President's desk. We have done more things in the last six months, but nobody knows about it. You know why? It's wall-to-wall -wall coverage on Russia. It's wall-to-wall -wall coverage on tweets. It's wall-to-wall -wall coverage in countdown clocks and all this other stuff. So even though there may be distractions out there in the media, no offense, 
Um, we're here getting our work done. I know you've done a lot, and particularly with rolling back regulations as well. Right. That's an important one, and that also does move the needle on economic growth. Quite a bit. But I think it's a fair question to ask. Do the Republicans really want to see this president succeed? Gosh, yeah, of course we do. Well, I mean, look at, for example, look at what just happened in the Senate. Look at Lisa Murkowski. She, she voted to repeal <laughs> Obamacare years ago, and you're, then she yeah. won't even uh, s uh, vote yes you're, to You're asking a House member to debate. criticize the okay. Senate. It's so tempting to do so. How about, <laughs> how about Rand Paul? How, how about your pushback within the House in terms of getting together, coming together on common uh, goals in terms of health care? We passed, we passed our repeal and replacing the House in May. That bill is done, out of the House, full-scale bill, the one we said we would pass. We passed it in May. We passed our repeal and replace of Dodd-Frank. We've done all those things that we've set out to do. The two big projects we have in front of us, tax reform, welfare reform. And infrastructure, we're on our way with that as well. We're moving our, our, our FAA bill, which is, which is aviation, and then we've got all these other infrastructure bills to follow. Has all of the noise been a distraction for you in any way? I mean, you're right, Russia, Walter It, it is Walter. distracting to the fact that our constituents don't know all that we did. But no, we're sitting here, we're, we're here doing our job, getting our work done. You know what's on the floor right now? Funding the military, funding, uh, funding the wall, funding um, the veterans in military construction. That's what we're doing right now on the floor.